Driving through the village recently on a glorious summer's day, I paused to record a few snippets of video. I was lucky to get chatting to a few residents who were enjoying this somewhat rare sunshine. Parking near the village centre crossroads, I spotted the village shop and post office. Apart from the pub, this surely is the hub of all village life. Next to the shop, I got chatting with this gentleman who was carefully attending his attractive garden. Then, to my amazement, he started to draw water from his garden well, something I hadn't seen since my childhood in Sussex. I just had to have a short record of that. Summerford has the honour of being home to what is almost certainly the oldest allotment site in the country. It was given to the poor agricultural workers in 1809 as part of the Villages Enclosure Act. It was to provide them with a little independence and a supply of good, wholesome, fresh food. Great Summerford's free gardens are still cultivated by villagers some 200 years later. Of course, there were many things during the war. For example, you were not allowed to grow cucumbers in a greenhouse because cucumbers were considered not to be a, a necessity crop. In other words, it was considered to be a luxury and therefore they could only be grown outdoors. So. There was all sorts of silly rules because we used to grow what they call ridge cucumbers, outdoor ones, during the war because they weren't allowed to, as I say, grow them in the greenhouse. Did you know that Summer Ford is the basis of the village name? The Summer Ford was the only place during the dry summer months when one could ford or cross the Avon. This area was once renowned for its cheese. North Wiltshire cheese was prized more highly than cheddar in the late 18th century. Sadly, those days are long gone. Opposite the shop is the one remaining public house in the village, the Volunteer Inn. As you might expect, this also plays an important part at the centre of the community. The Volunteer Inn is a delightful 19th century classic stone building. It's full of warmth, character and history. This end wall looks interesting. As a guess, I would say the fireplace and chimney have been removed. Sadly, the bright red brick inserts rather spoil the appearance of the original classic stones. The oldest house in the village is thought to be the Mount House. This timber frame barn stands adjacent to the church field. The present house is thought to date from around 1573.
The present church building dates from the 15th century. However, traces of an older building from the 12th century were revealed during some building work in 1974. The remains of what was probably a Norman castle have been found close to the church, and during the Second World War, a number of brick and concrete pillboxes were erected. These were along the riverside to serve as lookout posts. Three of these survive today. I'm told that this attractive house was home to the parents of Captain Mark Phillips, who went on to marry Princess Anne. Naturally, the churchyard holds the graves of generations of village families. and occasionally used to arrive in this field by helicopter. I was advised to look out for this special tree and seat as I left the village. Princess Anne planted the tree and there's a plaque here to commemorate the event.